testing an $1,800 laptop that promises to be repairable. But the catch is, I had to build it myself. Most laptops, like a MacBook Air, come to you completely built and working out of the box. But this, it's the Framework 13, and it comes with 20-ish boxes of various parts. They also handed me a screwdriver and an installation guide. Plus, no operating system. But this isn't an accident, it's actually a feature. Framework promises repairability, upgradability, and customizability with all their laptops. Which sounds great and cool, but are these laptops really worth their steep price tag? Is it really better having a product you can fix yourself versus just going to MacBook or HP instead? And who should buy these? Because let's just say they're not for everyone. But before we can answer any of those questions, I need to build this thing. And it's a good thing it comes with an in-depth step-by-step guide that I can follow, like a recipe. So while I've known a framework's existence for about a year now, thanks to watching LTT videos, framework happens to be something Linus himself is invested in. So he makes videos on them frequently. And if you've been around tech, it's hard to not know about framework. But I've never actually wanted to try one until recently when I got sick of Windows and their decaying operating system and then switched to Mac and then switched to Linux. The founder of framework, Nirav Patel, saw our Linux video and wanted us to try out one of their laptops. So he sent it over. It's supposed to be the end game laptop for Linux users but we'll see about that, won't we? So looking at the box of parts definitely feels overwhelming. Like what if something went wrong? What if I broke it? <laughs> So when you buy something, you sort of want to be able to use it the moment you get it. But in this case, the enjoyment of it comes from building it with your bare hands and blood and sweat. Hopefully there's no blood or sweat. So despite my hesitation, the build was quite foolproof. All you do is read and watch the video instructions and then follow along. It's really easy. The keyboard and bezel were magnetic, so alignment was quick and simple. And the hardest bit is actually removing these things on the back called expansion slots, you have to hold down this button at the same time you push on a slot out. You need like three hands to do that, but it's cool to put a laptop together. And after being built, ta -da, it actually looks pretty nice. But I wonder, Seriously though, I wonder how much does this thing cost? My initial guess is $1,500. It's not like Framework is a big tech manufacturer that deals with large quantities. So I think it'll be a bit pricier than usual. So I'm gonna build this exact configuration on their website. This is the Laptop 13. It's a super unique name, I know. It's like Nike calling their shoes, shoes 32. I guess Jordans do that though. And holy, this page is overwhelming as heck. There are so many parts to choose from. I could see people just getting stuck on their sales page and the parts for hours and hours and then deciding to buy a MacBook. But we're gonna power through and just rebuild whatever they sent me and I'm gonna try my best to explain all the different options because there are a lot. First up, we've got the AI7350 chip. Now don't let the name fool you, it's not really AI related at all. The chip just means it's meant for more demanding tasks like gaming and it starts at $1,229. But if you wanna save some money, you can go down to the AI5340 chip. It can do most work in entertainment tasks like watching videos. And the better chip, the AI9HX370 is even more graphically intense like 3D animation. Then there's the display, the screen. You got two options. You got matte, which is slightly lower resolution and it has a 60 Hertz display and a 2.8K version with higher resolution and 120 Hertz. In this case, I have the 2.8K. Next is RAM. While it's upgradable, the laptop only has two RAM slots to work with. So you have to replace your current sticks to upgrade to new sticks later. You can only pick DDR5 here, so we got two by 16 gigabyte sticks. And the cool part, you don't have to buy parts from Framework. You could bring your own. Buying from Framework just guarantees the compatibility. Next is storage, a must have since we have to install our operating system and store our files on something. The Laptop 13 only takes one NVMe M.2 SSD. So again, upgrading means replacing it, not adding two. So you have to transport your files over somehow. I've got one terabyte stick in this one. While I like that you can upgrade, I don't like that it's basically throwing out the old one and adding a new one. Unlike a PC where you can just keep adding more and more and more storage without throwing anything away. But this is pretty good for a laptop. Other laptops, you just throw out the entire thing and then you buy a new one. If you're looking to build a setup or upgrade your current one, look no further than the coolest monitor arm I've ever seen from today's sponsor, MSI. This is the MPG MT161R, a monitor arm that looks like it's straight out 
out of Star Wars with its awesome space gray and red design. But it does more than just look pretty. The spring arm design makes it ultra stable while also being super easy to tilt, swivel, and pivot to get that perfect monitor setting. You can also move it up and down, left or right, or even forward and backward, and it just glides into the perfect position without any wobble or sagging. And if you like RGB, this thing is calling your name. The base lights up with 20 different RGB modes. Pretty cool, huh? If you're worried about cable management, this arm has easy to use routing all along the arm to keep your workstation nice and tidy. In the back, it has a VESA quick release design, making it easy to swap out the monitor so you can spend less time setting up and more time gaming or doing whatever it is you like to do. Speaking of monitors, also check out MSI's third gen QD OLED monitor. The colors and true blacks look absolutely stunning on this display. It has a whopping 280Hz refresh rate and next to zero response time at 0.03 milliseconds. It also comes with a three year burn in warranty. So check out MSI's newest monitor arm and QD OLED monitor in the description below. For the operating system, I'm gonna bring my own here. That's why they sent this to me in the first place. The Laptop 13 has official community support from Linux distros like Fedora, Bazai, and Ubuntu, but you can use other distros too. That's actually pretty cool since I am a Linux user myself. <laughs> Next, colors. There are many colors to pick from, from boring black to interesting orange. For keyboards, you have a ton of international layouts as well as blanks for those of you who wanna show off your typing skills. And the power adapter, which is optional since you can use any 60 watt charger or over and it charges via USB-C. The biggest decision, which is a reversible one, is which expansion slots to pick. The laptop has four expansion slots, so choose wisely. There's USB-C, USB-A, HDMI, DisplayPort, SD card readers, Ethernet modules, and more to choose from. But one of them has to be USB-C to charge your laptop obviously. Thankfully though, you can mix and match and you can change them out as you wish. I chose the most popular option, which was two USB-Cs, one USB-A, and an HDMI input. For those of you who want to use your framework with a dock, the USB-C slots are Thunderbolt 4 certified, so that's a plus. So far, we're looking at $1,738 without tax or shipping. It's a little high, but I got pretty close. But with that same budget, I can get myself a pretty decent MacBook with the latest M4 chip chip, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and one terabyte of storage for around $1,800. Tough choice. But let's see if the framework laptop is as streamlined, because unlike a Mac, you get a lot more freedom and control of what goes in it. But it's not as easy as turning it on though. First, I have to pick a Linux distro to install. Now, I've been using Fedora Workstation, and I know it pretty well at this point, it's been a couple months, but why not keep it fresh and try something new? Haha, <laughs> well, this was my first mistake <laughs> among many. After using Linux for a couple months now, my confidence levels have increased way too much uh, for my limited amount of knowledge. So I decided to go with Bazite. It's new, it's different, it's fresh, but it also wasn't as customizable as I had wanted it to be. It looked like Fedora, but it didn't act like Fedora. So I ditched it after like 30 minutes. So I went to Fedora KDE instead, but then that got stuck in an endless restart loop. So I caved and ran back to Fedora workstation. Everything was pretty seamless after that. That it detected all my laptop parts, including the 120 Hz screen, and things were fine and dandy. And boom, finally, I can test the laptop instead of troubleshooting random problems. It literally took me an entire workday to build the laptop, which took like 20 minutes, but the installing a functional operating system part took me the rest of the day. But I guess when you use a DIY-ish computer with a DIY-ish operating system, you get some funky, weird problems. If you want a Linux distro that just works on your framework laptop, pick Fedora Workstation or skip the Linux rabbit hole entirely and get Windows pre-installed or installed yourself. But after using the framework Laptop 13, I just really hate that name. I do not like the name Laptop 13. Maybe we can give it a cool name. After using it as my primary laptop for about a week, there's a lot of cool things about it, especially compared to my old Dell XPS or even my current MacBook Air. The first is that I know I'm using a device that is a bit more sustainable. If the keyboard or the mouse were to die, the touchpad, I mean, which let's be honest, usually that's the first thing to go down on a laptop. Laptop, I can get a new touchpad for $39. My touchpad on my Dell XPS has been jank for years now, but I have no way of fixing it. The only thing I can do is contact Dell. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that, no way. When you look at the cost of the individual parts of a laptop that could break, it's actually pretty cheap to repair. Like the battery, $69, that's cool. Heck, a cell phone battery replacement costs more. But if you want to upgrade, things start to get a little bit interesting to the point where it might not make financial sense to do it. But I'll talk about that later in the things that I didn't love about this laptop. The second thing I love is the 120 Hertz screen, something that's reserved for only super high-end 
MacBook. Scrolling web pages on this thing is smooth. Whew. But the three by two uh, display is a little weird. Now I don't do any coding or programming, but my brother and sister do. And I think that screen resolution definitely gives you more real estate to code, especially if you utilize the horizontal screen too. But there's an issue. While it's great for displaying more things on the screen, watching TV shows and movies just feels awkward. It's like you're only using half the screen to view something and the black bars on the top and bottom are ginormous. It's just silly. But playing games on it is pretty fun. I played a bit of Power World, which made the fans run like crazy, but it worked. The graphics were decent, but it maxed out at about 20 FPS, so pretty frappy. But playing games like Stardew Valley might be a better bet. Another cool thing is that the screen can go as far as a complete 180 degrees from the keyboard. Pretty nifty. Not sure what I would use that for, but it's cool to have options. The MacBook is stuck at like here. The other thing that's unique is the keyboard. Now it feels significantly different than a scissor switch. The keyboard is a lot quieter. It has a longer typing distance. It's not quite mechanical, but it does give you a more satisfying typing feel than other laptops. Like there's a bump at the top that you need to press through to type. It's like a silent low profile tactile switch. That's the closest thing I could describe it to. While it takes some time to get used to, it's pretty nice to type on. Another thing that separates the framework laptop from other laptops are the expansion ports. If you need something specific, like an SD card reader, you could choose to use that. Or instead of carrying around a bunch of USB-C dongles, you can pick and choose what you want to put in these slots. For example, I read SD cards a ton, so it's nice to always have that slot instead of having to bring my own reader everywhere with me. Although I do need them to step up their game and do a combined SD and micro SD card reader in one. Just do that, please. I also like having an HDMI output for an external display. If you want faster internet, get the ethernet port and have a hardwired internet connection. The options are there. There's one more thing that I like that no one ever mentions, and it's the fact that you can cut power to the webcam and microphone just with these toggle buttons. It's so much better than putting a weird sticky note over your webcam. It's awesome. But life is not all rainbows and butterflies either. There are some pretty unique downsides to having a framework laptop as well. Like the fans get super loud, way louder than my MacBook does, even when it's rendering 4K 60 FPS footage for 20 minutes straight. Now I know most laptops get loud when you're gaming, so I'm not gonna take points away for that, but this thing got loud when I was just updating the BIOS. <laughs> What's going on here? It also gets hot. Not scalding hot, but pretty warm if you're using this on your lap. So unless you have a dedicated laptop workstation, like a desk, I wouldn't recommend it. And yes, I know no one uses their laptops on their laps anymore, but I'm just saying. Another thing is when you actually want to upgrade your laptop. If I wanted to go to the next generation chips, I would need to get a completely new motherboard and a chipset, and then potentially new RAM, new storage. And at that point, it's basically replacing every single part on your laptop. By that point, the price is close to the same as a new laptop. But Framework's hope is that their laptops will last five plus years or even a decade, especially if you compare them to other laptops. For other laptops, if something breaks, well, that might be it. The RAM, the storage, and other parts are permanently soldered in, so you can't fix it yourself. By the time you do need to fix it, the company doesn't even sell the parts anymore since they've moved on to a newer model. With Framework, repairability is definitely more cost effective than upgrading. It's essentially the same thing as having hot swappable switches in a keyboard. When one switch goes down, you can replace it and fix it, thus extending the life for many, many more years. So while the repairability is great, I'll have to see how easy it is to upgrade in the next couple of years when a better version comes out or not because we don't always have to upgrade our tech. The other thing that I find really annoying that no one told me about was the finicky USB-A ports. I do have a USB-A hub on other laptops and they work there. So it's definitely framework being weird. But I just used a, a dongle instead and it works fine. And I read that other people are experiencing the same problem as well. But let's not forget the three by two screen, which is a pro and a con. It's great for work, not great for movies. I've got a complicated relationship with it. I really think it's weird. Like it throws me off when I switch from my other laptops to this one. So who is the framework for? Because you could buy a framework or you can get something like a Dell, an HP, or even a MacBook, a similar specs for less. If you like to buy tech and just want to use it the moment it arrives at your doorstep, then a framework might not be for you. Sure, you could get the completely pre-built version of it, but when it comes time for repairs, 
are you gonna be able to do it? They do make it simple though. The framework is for believers of consumer first practices that us consumers deserve to be able to fix our tech and reduce the amount of e-waste we add to the world. Sure, it's not perfect, but it's a step forward and a vote towards better technology. If you love being in control of your tech and the path that it goes down and troubleshooting problems yourself, you'll love using a framework with a laptop. Look, I'm not even doing anything and it's so loud. I'm literally just on a web page the framework website. So while it's a super cool concept with great execution, it's not for everyone, but I do love what they're doing and I would vote towards it myself. Question is, would you?